we have been examining the concept of the fact that Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that God had poured out the Holy Spirit, and that's in miraculous measure, to guarantee the coming Holy Spirit. That outpouring of the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit had been for the Spirit as the Spirit of adoption. Romans 8, 14. Now, I want you to notice that Paul says, and by the way, let's not forget, we're, we're examining the parallels between Romans 5 through 8 and 1 Corinthians 15. The resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 was guaranteed by the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. In Romans 8, the Holy Spirit had been given as the earnest of sonship. Sonship and resurrection are very, very much interrelated. Since Jesus said in Luke chapter 20, in the age to come, they are sons of God being sons of the resurrection. You see the parallels? Do you, do you see the absolute interconnectedness between those? Now, I want you to notice that Paul then says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. You know, it would be a totally separate study, although not, a, not totally independent. It would be a separate study just to study the subject of the heir, being an heir of the inheritance. Because this Greek word, kleronomia, kleronomos, uh, is incredibly powerful and eschatological. Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, if you are Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, what promise is he talking about? He is talking about the promise made to Abraham that in he and in his seed, singular, all nations of the earth would be blessed. So here we find that an element of the Abrahamic promise was to be blessed to receive the inheritance of blessing in Abraham and his seed, which is Christ. Now, I want you to notice something here. Abraham, the inheritance that Abraham longed for, was the heavenly country, the fatherland country, and the heavenly city, a city not made with hands. Hebrews 11, 13 to 16. Now, I want you to notice this. Please catch the power of this. What Abraham was looking for was the heavenly city, the heavenly country. He's looking for a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11 tells us he saw that promise far off, but he embraced it because he believed it. But now watch this. Although he saw it far off, not for his day. By the way, when people say, oh, time statements don't mean anything? Really? So in other words, Abraham saw it as coming tomorrow. No, he saw it far off. Well, that's a diversion. But it's an important point. All right? Anyway, now watch this. He saw it. It was given to him. He knew it was far off. He knew it was not near. But, John 8, 56, Jesus, speaking of Abraham, said, Abraham longed to see my day. Now, he saw Jesus' day far off. He saw it and was glad. Why was he glad? Because he knew that Jesus' day, when Jesus came, the inheritance that he had been promised, what's the inheritance? The new heaven, the new earth, oh, and the new Jerusalem. Oh, now watch this. In Hebrews 11, it tells us Abraham saw the promises far off. They did not receive those promises. Oh, but wait. 
Catch this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 21 and following. You have not come to a mountain that might not be touched. And that, you know, not so much as an aim, angel or an animal could touch that mountain unless it be thrust through with a, uh, with a sword or with a spear. But you have come. Watch this. You have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. What was Abraham looking for? New Jerusalem. He saw it far off. Hebrews 12 says, you have arrived at Mount Zion. You have arrived at the city. You have arrived at what Abraham longed to see. What Abraham knew was far off, you've now arrived. Folks, there could not be a more powerful declaration that the time of the inheritance, that the time of them being heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, to receive the full reception of the heavenly city, the heavenly country, promised to Abraham. Far off, you have arrived. And then when we come to Revelation, and John describes the new heaven and the new earth, and says, these things must shortly come to pass. And when Jesus said, behold, I come quickly, come quickly for what? The new heaven and the new earth, the inheritance of Abraham. What Abraham saw far off, what those, that first century generation of those given the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit to bring that inheritance to a realization so that once it became the realized, consummated reality, then the Spirit would say, Come. Come into the new Jerusalem. Do you see how important it is to understand the doctrine of the inheritance? And boy, we've got more from Romans 8 and 1 Corinthians 15 so we'll see you on the flip side.